Brian DeCosta, a well-known natural bodybuilding champion who has shocked a lot of people with his physique and won a ton of shows, including world championships. He's had a massive impact on the fitness industry, both to his willingness to stay drug-free as well as obviously the accolades he's developed within bodybuilding and fitness. And his fitness journey wasn't necessarily straightforward as he started his journey as an accountant. Brian then transferred into more of a coaching lifestyle and suddenly going into bodybuilding himself. DeCosta openly shares his background, including overcoming bulimia during college, a struggle that developed as an attempt to maintain a lean and muscular physique. His experience led him to adopt a balanced and sustainable approach to fitness, where he emphasizes mental health alongside of physical achievements. Recently, he's won the WNBF World Championship title in 2023, which is the best you can get in natural bodybuilding. Many people have also claimed that he's not a natural bodybuilder and that he is faking it as a fake natural athlete because, well, he's done enough to really get suspicious amounts of accolades within the natural bodybuilding realm. However, in this video, my goal is not to create a video telling you if he is natural or not. In fact, it's much darker than that. Erin Colleen, who used to be his girlfriend. She'll be the other party that we're diving into in today's video. She's a fitness influencer who gained a substantial following by sharing her transformation journey from 207 pounds to now becoming an advocate for strength training and well-balanced nutrition with a really decent physique. And that physique has garnered a lot of her attention, we'll be honest, just like most fitness influencers who are females and like to wear skin-tight clothing and very revealing clothing and that. And now she owns many gyms, coaching companies, supplement brand deals, all the stuff to make tons of money and really wring her audience as dry as possible. Milking the cow, if you would. Now, both characters aren't perfect. They have their flaws. And this is very clear with any human being. No one is perfect and angelical. And each person is going to have something wrong with them. And what we are going to discuss in today's video is the flaws that have unfortunately been opened up to the public, with both of these individuals being revealed as someone they aren't necessarily showing themselves to be online. Specifically, some of those flaws being revealed to intentionally hurt DeCosta's reputation online and make his business necessarily a failure, which you'll soon see only garnered him a ton of virality. Aaron recently posted this, which since DeCosta posted a response, we'll cover soon. But in this video, it's obvious that you can see she's bruised, cut up, and has injuries. And in this, she's talking about DeCosta's, her boyfriend, having committed these acts against her. It's highly graphic content very sensitive to viewers and definitely evokes some form of emotion that's quite potent in a lot of people. And so it resonates with them well. Comments started flooding in on DeCosta's Instagram page and YouTube channel to a point in which he actually had to shut his Instagram page down so that no one could view it. Also, his YouTube channel had nearly every video, even year old videos, swamped with negative comments about the incidents. This one reads, the guy beat up this girl and you are all still here singing his motherfucking praises. Stop following people that put their hands on significant others, period. That's not going to age well, as you'll soon see. And it's really scary to see the random people on the internet and the lengths that they'll go to with just a simple claim that another person made and with no evidence. All it takes is a simple statement, comment, or video to harm and damage someone's reputation and even put them in legal trouble. And because of this, it therefore became critical for DeCosta to represent himself on a video in which he did, titled Context for what happened. In this video, he goes on to show many voice recordings, videos, and so on about the entire situation, bringing real receipts to the actual party. So one night, they got into a confrontation about two months ago. As you can hear here, they went to a cooking class, and it ended up being much more. And as they got into the car, an argument ensued because of a picture that DeCosta had posted when he was in high school getting a trophy from one of the girls providing that trophy to him. She was a trophy bearer. Of course, this woman has zero relevance to DeCosta's life as she was literally just handing him the trophy and he was talking about how cool it was back in the day that he was a pretty avid athlete. His girlfriend really didn't like the picture and started to pick at him about, was that your girlfriend? Do you miss her? I've had people do these same things to me as well, which is really, really weird. Like multiple decade old photos being brought up in some kind of relevance to the modern day, which is just random as shit. He then goes on to explain. I think she made a comment like, is that your girlfriend or something? Either way, she may have not meant anything by it, but it bothered me and we started to get into a disagreement that eventually got quite heightened. And in the vehicle, it divulged into name calling. She claims that I screamed 
F you to her. I did not do this. All I heard is her scream F you to me. So then I yelled it back at her. We started calling each other names. When we got home and things continued, the disagreement continued in the kitchen, I decided to go in our basement, which is what I would often do, and go to bed. We had a finished basement with an extra bedroom. And when we would be in disagreements, I would go down there and separate myself because we stayed in the same bedroom, the master bedroom together. Things would have just escalated. So he ends up in the extra bedroom in their house just to separate himself from the situation and go there to be his in his own bed for the night, something I actually do often when I'm just confronted with a lot of stuff. Whether that is a disagreement within the relationship or in general just a stressful night, I'm more than happy to take my space because I really do value my personal space. And I often think that sometimes people in relationships feel entitled to be around each other 24-7 without providing that other person's space because why do they need it? They should love me. But I think developing an orderly and comfortable room or space from each other can be really useful in a relationship. It's healthy to be away from each other without having to constantly be magnetized towards each other. However, that's not what happened here. I'm not talking to you. Why are you, why are you I'm not talking to you. To I'll talk. Days? I'll talk to you in the morning. About what? I'll talk to you in the morning. You said God. you. You said fuck you out of nowhere. I told her, I'm going to bed, I'll talk to you in the morning. And I go downstairs, she had texted me, which would often happen if we would separate after a heightened disagreement, we would continue in separate parts of the house via text. I engaged with her back a little bit, I was also quite upset. And then I eventually stopped texting because I knew it was not productive and I knew we just needed to sleep on it and to wake up and start fresh in the morning with a clearer mind. Next thing I know, the light flips on to the basement downstairs and she's walking down the stairs down the stairs, I hear her steps, I get up out of bed and I crack the door and look out and see that she's walking down the stairs and filming. So I shut the door and I grab my phone so I could also start filming. And this is a habit that Aaron and I had built in our relationship dating back to probably April of this year. This is a hallmark of a toxic relationship when you have to record your significant other because you want to garner evidence against them with any statement that they make. That is a massive red flag. And it's honestly disgusting to a point where it makes me sick to my stomach and it's just vomit inducing we're both filming she comes to the door and is trying to open the door and then i'm coming down there literally trying to talk to you trying to get into a room in our house you're way bigger than me way stronger than me you're sitting there holding the door shut i'm literally trying to get in i tried to open a fucking door in yes. the house that we live in together yes and i told you i did not feel it safe it doesn't matter Yes, it does. She opens the door and gets it about six inches open, at which point I'm on the other side of the door and I'm holding it shut. And I'm telling her, Aaron, do not come in this room. I don't feel safe. Please leave me alone. And she's saying, she's also filming and saying, I just want to talk. Let me in the room. Let me in the room. This is my house. Let me in the room. I'm repeatedly saying, please leave me alone. Please go upstairs. I do not feel safe. Don't come in this room. She now at this point has her leg in the doorway in between the door frame and the door itself. So I can't shut the door with Without, like crushing her leg like her leg was in the way so I'm just holding it shut it's like six inches open and we're in this stalemate for two or three minutes she's putting a good amount of pressure on the door but not so much that I can't keep it closed with my body weight I'm not letting her in the room I don't want to engage then she kicks it up a notch to literally 100% effort after like I said about three minutes she starts full-on barging the door with her elbow pushing me out of the way trying to get into the room like I said the door was about six inches open and she is with all of her might just trying to force me out of the way and, and get into the bedroom. And you can really just depict how this situation is going in slow motion by the verbalization of what's happening, as well as the voice memos. You can understand how quickly it's escalating and turning into just a simple disagreement into a physical altercation. And it's interesting because in the military, we have these two terms, escalation of force and rules of engagement. It basically describes that you cannot shoot or harm someone in a deadly manner unless certain criteria are met. And these rules can go quite muddy the criteria that have to be met in the heat of a situation. If you have six people yelling at you, simultaneously another group of people shooting at you, simultaneously a overhead Blackhawk making a ton of noise as well, creating wind current, dust going everywhere, and then you have people approaching you, it's really hard to make a decision that, hey, these people have a rifle, they're even pointing it at me, but it hasn't shot yet. I still can't shoot them, but in your mind, you don't really know what's right or wrong, and it can be a very hard decision to make in an instant 
instantaneous moment. It is extremely important you don't make the wrong decision because it can be considered a war crime and those issues on a political, geopolitical scale can get really nasty when it comes to world wars and we try to avoid it at all costs. Of course, this is a lighter form of that. So at, at which point does De Costa have the right to defend himself from someone trying to enter a room in which he's clearly trying to provide himself space from the other person? When has it essentially gone too far where it's okay to evacuate another person from a situation? In response to this, I pushed her out of the door and immediately slammed the door and dragged a big dresser that I had at the base of the bed up against the door so she couldn't get in the door. When I pushed her out of the room, she fell into a wall that's like three feet, three or four feet away from the door itself and hit her shoulder on the drywall, put a little hole in the drywall and fell on the floor. And I think she got a, a bit of a rug burn on her back, like down her back. I also want to point out something weird that both parties here are definitely at fault in some capacity, but he mentions that he put this dresser on the door to keep her out. And he even says it was successful at doing that. Now, I don't know about you, but the little legs on this dresser and the surface area that they take up really imply to me that the dresser isn't that heavy as well as that it wouldn't have enough surface area on the ground to actually keep the door shut if someone was to actually push upon it. And I highly doubt that the dresser itself is more than the female. Let's just say she's 130 pounds. Likely her pushing on the door is going to move the dresser for sure. Bit of a weird part of the story there. Literally, you did not need to fucking push me into a wall. You could have just shut the door. I couldn't shut the door, Aaron. You were shoving yourself into the door. Okay, Brian. I could not you shut the door. You literally are infinitely so much stronger than me and you're really trying to sit here and convince me that you couldn't shut the door I could we test it right now and I'll push no. with all my fucking might and you'll push with all your might and we'll see if you could shut the door Aaron, are I you could not, fucking crazy I could not shut the door because your leg was in the door and now it's morning time he finally gets to bed after she leaves him alone and he goes upstairs to get ready for the day where he is instantaneously confronted again you don't even have the videos and I know you don't yes I do How did in I my videos, you in the room? You literally had the room barricaded. I literally stood up here with this pushed against All that. the videos, all the videos that I had last night are on not on here anymore. Why are they not? Because when I, I literally said when I looked at your camera, and it's literally in my video. Aaron, all the videos that I had last night that I are because not on my phone you anymore. Are voice no, recording, you you can't video record. No, I was video recording. No, I right. I was right. watching I was watching them back on my phone. You went downstairs and deleted them off my phone. How did I go downstairs and delete them when you literally barricaded? Could not open the door. Why did you do that? I didn't I didn't delete your videos, Brian. Please. You deleted yeah. all the videos that were on my yeah. phone. Okay, Brian. I deleted the videos off of your phone that I haven't even been around you for. I had four videos on my phone last night that I watched, last night that I watched, and they are no longer here. You literally said to me in here, check your camera roll, they're not there. How'd you know that, Aaron? When you said, check your camera roll, they're not there. How did you know that they weren't there? Aaron, how did you know they weren't there? Are you lying about everything else? I knew you were gonna lie about everything, so. Turns out, and she had finally admitted this to me a day or two later, that she, that night, had gotten on my computer, my MacBook, and gone onto my Photos app and deleted the videos that way. And for those who use Apple products, you know, when you take a video or a photo on the phone and you have iCloud syncing, they both sync together. She was able to, from my computer, delete the videos, and they also removed from my phone. Damn, boys, that one is crazy. Keep your fucking keys and passcodes safe, because you never know. You never know, brothers. You never know. What I'm scared most of Aaron is the fact that you went to a level to delete my side of the story. I shouldn't have deleted them. I did it so fucking fast that night. I shared the videos with me and then deleted them because I literally thought that the next morning, I didn't think that it was going to blow into this whole situation. Why did you delete them? If you wanted them, why didn't you just ask me for them and not delete them off my phone? Because I don't know what's on them. Also, the last video that you have is fucking terrible. You literally positioned to make it look like I'm trying to break into this fucking room while you have this terrified dog. The dog is scared because you literally just threw me against a wall. No, the dog was scared because you were trying to break into the the dog was scared from the whole situation okay, that's fine. should i have deleted the videos no so he tries to leave and she continues to harass him i want you to feel as comfortable as possible i want to just get Never this will. stuff out of the room Never will. i want to get this stuff out of the room yeah i'm sure you do you want to leave so fucking bad get out run away go live your happy little life without me you got it you win i'm sure you're better off on the other side <laughs> 
definitely living a better life. Aaron, this made it so much easier for me to cool. get out of here, honestly. Awesome. Like, this is insane. Yeah, you've made it so easy for me, too. You literally told me that you feel stuck in this relationship and that you didn't want to stay with me all day, yet you asked me to go on a walk. You're the most Why do you keep thing? bringing up a walk? I, I yeah. thought it was a nice gesture to, like, let's get fresh air. Let's go outside. I'm going to dump you, and then I'm going to give you a nice gesture of asking you to go on a fucking walk, but you don't even have the fucking decency to actually dump me. You just said it in a way that I had to, like, Take it out of fucking context? Aaron. You ask me if I want to break up, I say no. You don't even break up with me. It's just supposed to be like expected that I knew we were broken up leaving that conversation. And then you understand why I'm so mad. I thought me sending you that text was a nice like, hey, Bridgeway text for us to come home and like try to work things out and move through things. Yet, meanwhile, I didn't realize that while I was gone, you were gonna start packing. Can Aaron, can you go and go to the gym with Allison and have a night with her? I will be getting all of my no. stuff. What do you mean no? I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to do anything. Do you want me to not pack? And I'll pack. I already told you I didn't want to break up. Don't ask about what I want. You told me you want to leave me, so fucking leave. You are making this choice. Don't ask me. Why do you keep asking me these questions? Aaron, I don't know what to do right now. I don't know what to do. You are behaving extremely erratically right yeah, now. Yeah, because of you. Welcome to literally how you've made me as a fucking person. I can't even think straight because of you. Because I'm on this fucking emotional This is not, beca this is not because really? of me. Brian? This really, is not Brian? because of me. Have you listened to anything I've said about the way you've acted today? I'm not engaging with you right now. You, you need to calm down. You have to calm down, Aaron. You want to know why I can't make it work and why I can't move forward. No, I want to know why you... It's, it's because by you breaking my trust, getting on my phone and deleting and attempting to get rid of my side of a very, very emotionally charged and heightened abusive situation, situation with legal repercussions. Yeah, which will be and then and then saying that you're gonna pursue legal action by you doing that, you are tampering with my side of the story and by deleting it, you are virtually, without saying it, are admitting that, hey, no. I did, I did something wrong. I'm sorry. Then we why? We're just gonna take it to court. My, my question is That's why, fine. did no, my, Aaron, my question no. is why did you remove it though? We're just gonna go to court, Brian. Why did you remove it though? I don't trust you either. So, we can go to court. This might just be me, but when I say it's hard to watch this stuff, it really is because some part of me can internalize it and relate with the emotions that both parties are probably experiencing. The tension, the screaming, the adrenaline rush, the hatred, the sadness, the confrontation is just awful and draining. I and if you're in an environment like this where someone's just constantly berating you and screaming at you for something that doesn't even really make sense, you have to get out. Like, relationship end maxing, bro. And when someone says you're acting erratically and that that is the reason that they're screaming at you at the top of their lungs, whilst you're just holding a normal conversation at a normal volume, trying to imply logic, eh, it's a big, big red flag. I mean, that is like the actual definition of gaslighting to the extreme. Gaslight maxing, bro. So he, he goes on to actually uh, propose some questions after presenting all of this data. Yes, a really good question with this statement. And it's something I repeatedly see on social media. Why did you want to come into the room? Why did you get on the computer, delete the videos showing you're the aggressor in the situation, and then lie to me about doing so when you know that you did that? Why did you not call the police immediately if you felt that I was abusing you? Why were there no charges? Why was there no police report filed? Why was I the one that ended 
our relationship a full month after the situation happened. Why were you begging me to stay in the relationship if I'm the one who's being an abuser to you? Why do you feel the need to share about this online publicly when you know we have a quote unquote formal relationship with social media and use it for business? These are things I fully don't understand, but ultimately my theory here is Erin is extremely upset that I ended our relationship and she's acting out in this way, posting out of context clips to paint me as an abuser, like I hit her online which I didn't. And number two, I think Aaron wants to exploit me potentially for attention and, you know, controversy draws attention online, which can give you followers and engagement and public favor. And I had to record this video to put my side out and explain what truly happened and give the full context. When a woman simply can't handle being confronted, she tries to burn a man's reputation to the ground, many times being successful, both messaging his friends, going as far as messaging his employer. And if he's a social media influencer, he's an easy target and it's a simple process to post a couple inflammatory statements or videos and try to get an audience against him. Many times and many many times this happens it's even happened to me before and it's actually a, a really fucking weird thing because you would just think logically right this this very logical thought process which is if I'm going to take to social media and create a highly inflammatory statement about a certain individual and commit a statement to say he abused me he did illegal things to me very clearly like things that would end a person up in jail or prison, at least with a court case, why not just go to the legal route as opposed to posting on social media before having any legal action taken or legal action period. I mean, in fact, most of the time this happens on social media, the female actually never takes legal action. And you know, there's a lot of simps who are going to say, well, she didn't, you know, she was too nervous to, she didn't know what was going to happen. So you post to 500,000 people and you're not nervous about that, but going to one police station and reporting one crime is more nerve wracking. Look, we covered this situation with Joe for Frazier last month as well. And the same thing happened, a mirror of this exact situation had happened where his significant other posts horrible content regarding him saying that he was highly abusive, using steroids, doing the whole nine and just an awful person. Meanwhile, when Joe brings the receipts that are the real receipts and can actually show people text messages, videos and voice memos, man, she disappears, <laughs> deletes her account, deletes her posts, blocks everyone who's commenting negatively, which is in fact, what happened here with the significant other and goes off the face of the earth. Again, if these situations are real and the men in these situations are actually abusive, by all means, they should face the full penalty of the law. But just posting on social media kind of shows that you aren't necessarily articulating a real story and much of it is being fabricated. You share pictures and comments without any sort of context, nor a story from another person's side. And then all of a sudden, it's spontaneously turns out that the men had little to do in the situation and in fact you were the instigator to the actual problem the female and that's the great thing about the law is it takes both sides it compares them to each other and then presents those sides to a third party who is not an audience of underage individuals or people who don't have a professional ability to look at hard data and objective evidence and make a decision if you really wanted to get a resolution to the problem it's not posting on social media that's going to get it to you it is going to a court. And that is what blows my mind most about this kind of stuff. It's very clear they're not looking to get a resolution. They just want to hurt someone's career. Greg Doucette even ended up commenting on this YouTube video. Toxic relationships simply need to end. I was asked multiple times by multiple people to post a video on this topic and make it look like Brian was an asshole. But I choose not to because most of the time there's always a different story. Behind the scenes, it's so easy to manipulate the situation and make it look like it's one way versus another. I think he meant instead of trying to tear apart the other person, and just move on with their lives, which I agree with. If you're really fed up with a person, just leave the situation. Completely bounce, ghost, don't even do anything. Another person comments, it's scary that without recordings, the word of a man is practically worthless against a woman. Ultimately, leaving an unhealthy relationship before it comes to toxic, abusive, or dangerous. Yeah, and I agree with this statement. You have to leave. As a man, you're at the subjectivity of whatever statement that she makes, and you do have to be extremely careful, especially if you're an influencer on the internet that has as an audience that expects a certain image to come from you. And of course, like I had mentioned, she's already taking to social media, making sure that she is clearing her accounts of all information regarding the topic and all of the posts that she made, stories, and everything. But thankfully to the Wayback Machine and other... <laughs> 
<laughs> people are so dumb man like anything you put on the internet is accessible so if i posted something yesterday and people got really mad at me for it i would then just simply delete it right and think oh it's it's taken care of now the majority of people won't see it anymore no 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 see there's a beautiful beautiful system called the internet archives and i can go back as far as 2015 2010 and see anything that anyone has posted and i love it because you can just see the idiocy in people's presidencies i mean everything it's it's crazy actually and so this is happening live of a female trying to manipulate the situation. So what's the point of me bringing this to you? Why even talk about it? Well, I think there's a really important thing to take away because I know a lot of my audience aspires to build their own career, especially to look online for that career because e-commerce is kind of the way of the future, whether people like to admit it or not. If you want to make multi millions of dollars, it's online. That's going to be the easiest route to do that for you. And when you have that fragility, the house of cards that is the online e-commerce, your reputation is really at the whimsical state of your audience. And so if you have a major player trying to corrupt your audience or infect them with some sort of mind virus, it's very damaging to your income, livelihood, and brand. And sometimes that's a really great thing because there's a lot of scammers and horrible people on the internet who are trying to push content and products that are just fucking awful and terrible and have truly horrible morals. But most of the time, there's also a bunch of people who are just doing good things and trying to make the most out of their life as well as what they're doing on their platform. And people who are feeling some form of vendetta, some form of of revenge want to capitalize on this honestly curious state that they're in with social media and hurt them. And that is exactly what we're seeing here. So just cover your bases, really like cover your bases, have people sign NDAs and shit like this, because it's important. Okay. It's, take it from me. It's really important. But what do you think about this situation? How would you have handled it? Is he in the right or is he in the wrong? I, I'm actually curious. I love reading your comments. If you guys are actually really interested in supporting this channel, you could do me one solid favor and it would honestly make my day. We have a Discord group, it's private, and it has paid access. There's a free group in there that you can actually communicate with me directly, but there's also a paid group, which is only $3 a month, and you can scale up if you need to for other products or access to free things. But it does support this channel producing daily content, for you to view, as well as it puts direct input into what I make for videos or how I produce videos. The people who are there and tell me, this is what I think about this video, or this is what I hate about this video, I really listen to them because they're actually part of my audience. They're actually investing in me as a creator, and I wanna to listen to everything that they have to say. So all needless to say, if you wanna be more of a contributor and help me out, it would be awesome to see you in that Discord group. Alternatively, it's free to subscribe, and it would mean the world to me. I'll catch you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.